stop. That hurt. That made me afraid. Okay. Please don't strike that note again. I will not. Hi, I'm Hal Thompson, and I'm an expert. Today, my guest is Dweezil Zappa, guitarist and man of the world. Yes, thank you so much for having me. You're currently on the Choice Cuts World Tour, playing yeah. a variety of music. Is this accurate? That's very accurate. Thanks for doing your research. I have some Choice Cuts of ham. Oh, okay. That I brought. That looks good. Now, uh, I will have to check to see if it has uh, nitrates or anything like that because I, I'm not a fan of, of nitrates. It's got acidity regulator and mm. conservatives. I don't see anything about nitrates or other explosives. That does seem to indicate that it's a preservative of, of some sort rather than just salt. In order for two men to trust each other, they just need to have ham. Maybe slide this under the strings. Now that all the music you create will be very trustworthy. It will be, and it will be delicious. I heard that Eddie Van Halen and Steve Vai taught you how to play guitar. Uh, well, not necessarily. I did actually have an opportunity to play with them at different times, but it wasn't under the auspices of a lesson, per se. Did you learn anything else from them? They obviously have cultivated a persona that indicates that they are very exciting people. It is pretty exciting to put your cigarette at the end of your guitar. Yeah, the, I don't smoke, so that was one thing I didn't try to do. That wasn't the persona you were looking for? No. What do you put at the end of your guitar? Maybe a vape? No, these days it, it's ham. Oh, yeah. I heard your father might be famous. What's, what's he known for? Uh, some people know him as a musician. Some people know him as a political watchdog, per se. You know, like, the, the problem is his music spans so many different kinds of music. The stuff that got on the radio might indicate that he was a comedy or novelty performer. But really, he was a, a classical composer who used a rock band as an orchestra. So he didn't just make gag songs. He made other songs that were more important? That's a very good way of saying it. What yeah. was his name? Frank Zappa. I wonder if I could change my name to Hal Zappa? You could. You might run into trouble with the Zappa Family Trust, though, I'm just saying. I heard that you might have run into trouble with the Zappa Family Trust. That was something that happened. You might have even named your tour after the trouble. The name gave me the opportunity to play whatever I chose. Dweezil Zappa plays whatever the F at percentage K he wants, cease and desist tour. Yes. You have a sister who is also a lunar measurement? Yes, my sister Moon. What, what else can she be used to measure? Well, if you're familiar with any of my father's music, there is a phrase that you could use the chicken to measure it. So she could be used to measure a chicken, which could be used to measure any other item. Maybe she should change her name to Chicken Measurement. That's a good idea. I mean, I don't know if she'll go for it, but... I like measuring chickens. You do? I have a number of goats and chickens at my house. Where do they live at your house? Some of them are indoor goats, some are outdoor. The outdoor goats, are they friendlier than the indoor goats or vice versa? The outdoor goats are rough by nature. Those goats mistreat me. That's too bad. I, they won't listen to me at all. When they don't listen, how does that make you feel? I go into a rage sometimes. This is my rage look. I can see how that would confuse the goats. That's what my house is for, really, to confuse goats. You've clarified now that it's really just to confuse them. Keep the goats confused and then they become less volatile. That's my motto. That's a pretty decent motto to live by. I mean, it's, it's just slightly above adequate. Slightly above adequate, that's my motto. So you have more than one motto. That's, that's also motto. my motto. I have more than one motto. Also acceptable. That's not one of my mottos, though. Maybe we should start discussing somatology. What's somatology? It's a part of anthropology, but it deals more with the physical conditions of individuals, like what positions their body would be in based on their DNA and how they became who they are, their mannerisms, their features. Maybe if you procreated, what would happen? I stay away from that procreation stuff. Why? When sometimes you get close to a lady and they try to strike you, strike you down. Striking could be dangerous. <laughs> I heard that you played the part of Duckman. Uh, no, I didn't actually. <laughs> you were Ajax. I heard that you, I heard that you were Ajax in Duckman. I was. There was a show called Duckman. It was on the USA Network. Did you have to stay up all night? 
No, I didn't have to stay up all night to record the audio. You wouldn't want to stay up all night. It might not be good quality. Well, it depends. Some people are, are more acceptable at nighttime. I'm more acceptable at nighttime. Yeah? It's very dark in my house. I turn off all the lights and I whisper to the goats. Yeah, so how often are you at home in the dark? 38%. That's lower than I was expecting, actually. Where are you the other percentage of your time? Get over to my friend Critch's house. What's Critch do? She you... spends 100% of her time being a lady. Have you ever been struck by her? I've never been allowed in her house. So, do you actually know her? She talks to me. What kind of tone of voice does she talk to you in? Hail, 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 hail! Critch. 38% perturbed. 38% is a, is a common figure with you. I wouldn't know. Did you have a nickname for your dad? Maybe Dad Zap or Zap Dad, mm. Zap, Zap Papa? No. Did he have a nickname for you? No. I wondered why your parents named you and your sister such pedestrian names. Could you recommend some other names we should consider? I thought maybe something a little more interesting like Wolf Bath. <laughs> I do like Wolf Bath. I'm gonna really, I'm gonna write that one down. Did you ever meet Captain Beefheart? Uh, he used to call the house sometimes. If you said hello, he would say, Oh, hello. Yes. Who is this? Oh, is this Dweezil? Yes. Oh. Uh, this, it's almost like Yoda. I get a lot of goblins that call me and sound like that. Where do the goblins live? They have condos. That is nice. Some of them put up Christmas ornaments around this time of year. Are you jealous? I'm a little jealous, because in my house it's more about confusion. It's more about confusion and darkness. And I don't really know what season it is. But what would happen if you exploded the darkness with the festivities of Christmas? With the light of the Lord? Yeah, I mean, if you want to look at it that way. I don't want to. Did you know him when he was a lieutenant? Lieutenant Beefheart? No. I bet he was a lot different. Well, maybe he was still thinking that he had to raise the bar because, you know, he wasn't quite captain yet. He, it was a self-promotion? Maybe. You were once an MTV VJ? Yeah. Did, well, how did that go? It was a new thing where people were excited to be able to hear music with their eyes, and it ruined music forever. I started to say things that perhaps were not friendly as other people with the VJ position. So for example, if we had to play Lionel Richie's Dancing on the Ceiling video 70 or 80 times, I would not even try to pretend that I liked it. It started to make you feel unfriendly? A little bit. You started yeah. to question reality, maybe? I did. How was, how was he dancing on the ceiling? Didn't make sense. Well, here's the thing. Lionel Richie has written a lot of very good songs. I am a fan of his, but some of the videos ruined the enjoyment factor. There was another one where there was a blind girl that saw Lionel Richie, but she's blind. She saw Lionel Richie because she made his face out of clay. And it was a dead ringer for Lionel Richie, but she's blind. How did she do it? I don't know. That's the part that is mysterious. That's amazing. I could see how that would ruin the song, though. You could never listen to the song without thinking about the clay face of Lionel Richie. That disturbing clay face haunts you to this day? Not just me. You were in the movie Running Man? I was. Did you get a chance to meet Buzzsaw while you were on set? I don't recall meeting Buzzsaw. Uh, maybe he had to split. I do remember... Richard Dawson? He was quite popular with the ladies. I saw him kiss a lot of ladies. Yeah. I tried to do that myself. Didn't really work out. Is that when you were struck? I would get imprisoned. Who, who tried to imprison you? All the different officers. Okay. Did you want to play a little music for us? I, I'm going to play you a, a, a melody that I think you'll probably appreciate. This is very similar to Lionel Richie. Uh, it's a beautiful melody. <laughs> That sounds wrong. Can you play di a different music? A different music? Okay, how about uh, if I play something like... No, that sounded wrong too. I feel like something's missing. Like what? A statue of Lionel Richie's face. 
Well, okay, now picture Lionel Richie's face. Okay. Made of clay uh -huh. by a blind woman who's never been able to see him, but she did touch his face and miraculously was able to reconstruct that. And in her mind, this was the melody that she was listening to. I see it now. I can taste the face. I'm glad I could help you. I got some questions from my friends on Facebook. Okay. Fendril D. Irby asks, if you could only have one string on all your guitars for the rest of your life, which one would you choose? Probably the G string. Why do you like the G string? Well, it's right in the middle of the guitar. It gives me more room to maneuver. I thought you were gonna make a joke about butts. Yeah, well, you know, that would be the obvious choice. Which note is the best note? I'm gonna say A flat. Can I hear one? Here is the note A. And if I play A flat against A, it sounds like this. That, hurt, that made me afraid. Okay. Please don't strike that note again. I will not. I got a question from Sean Henry. He said, if you could have a comic animal sidekick, what animal would it be and why? Uh, probably a dolphin. A funny talking dolphin with sunglasses? He doesn't have to have sunglasses. Jay Allen asks, how do you manage your guitar goat life balance? I don't have any goats. I can't identify with that. Nathan Falk says, do you have any special songs for serenading goats? I, I can think of one. I see it in my hand. Well, I'm glad I could provide some stimulus for you. I'd like to thank you, Dweezil, for b being on the hot seat today. Sure, it's been very warm. Maybe you could serenade us out? Sure. I have a, I have a beautiful melody in mind. Mm -hmm. 